throws it down. Shot is good. Tony Parker blocked by Boss. Game over. There'll be a game seven. One game on our home floor to bring home another championship, man. This is everything that we worked for all season long. All the sacrifices we've made to each other, dog. Every single day, dog. Every single minute. It's gonna pay off. They say hard work pay off, man. So let's make that statement become true. LeBron James and the Heat coming off one of the most remarkable finishes you'll ever see. A breathtaking overtime victory in game six to keep their season alive. Meanwhile, Tim Duncan and the San Antonio Spurs suffering as gut-wrenching a loss as you can imagine. Now the former champs with an opportunity to redeem themselves. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Game 7 of the NBA Finals. Along with Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Green on hand, Doris Burke with us as well. It's only fitting that these two teams, the two very best in the NBA, after battling for six games, have it come down to one final game to decide who will be the NBA champion. And for the San Antonio Spurs, Jeff, that championship was right there. Oh, they were so close. A crushing defeat. So the question is, how do they bounce back emotionally and on the basketball court? Well, it's not fatal nor final if they get it done here in Game 7. And to do that, Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker have to be more efficient, particularly when LeBron James is guarding them. They have to move harder without the ball, and then the screens that Tim Duncan sets for them in the pick-and-roll game have to be more solid. There's a cliche in sports on the brink of elimination. Well, the Heat took that to a whole new level in Game 6, but they were able to survive and force this Game 7. Same scenario for the Heat. How will LeBron James lead him to a possible victory? Just trust his instincts. Play off your basketball IQ and do what the game and the defense presents. But he has to set a tone defensively like he did in Game 6 on Ginobili and on Tony Parker. So we're set to go here before a capacity crowd at the American Airlines Arena. No changes in the starting lineups for Game 7. We've seen them several times throughout the finals. And we begin Game 7 with a poor toss, or is it a clock malfunction? They're going to throw it up again. There's the starting lineups. That number on the right of each player is how many Game 7s they've played in their career. And that includes tonight. James starts on Ginobili. And Chalmers on Parker. Kawhi Leonard. Parker finding Danny Green. Green, the runner along the baseline, won't go. Rebound Miller. Both teams would love to push the ball. As Chalmers throws it, stolen by Green. And the first turnover of the night. Turnovers have played a key part throughout these finals. Each team already with one. James to the basket. Lost it, was stripped. The Spurs saying it was off James's leg, but the call is Miami ball. Greg Popovich asking Monty McCutcheon nicely to change the call. <laughs> Chris Bosch, who made so many big plays down the stretch of game six. Wade battling now two knees that have been giving him problems. His first shot in and out. You'd have to think, Jeff, coaches and players, you know, they're always nervous before big playoff games as a foul's called on Bosch. But a game seven, there has to be extra butterflies. Well, I think they both are coming from such diverse standpoints. San Antonio, how do they bounce back? And does that diffuse some of their energy in Miami with the miracle win? Have they been able to regulate themselves and get themselves settled so they're ready to play their very best game? Parker back door gets away from Miller and a nice finish. This is the 18th time that an NBA Finals has gone to a game seven. Of the previous 17, the road team has only won three times. And the last time was 35 years ago. And the Bullets won in 78. Nice pass. And James converts it. And very interesting, Danny Green is matched up on Chalmers tonight. Tony Parker on Mike Miller, maybe to try to conserve some of 
Tony Parker's energy. Nice tip in from Duncan off Green's miss. James went for a steal. It opened things up a bit, and the Spurs have the early lead. Duncan, of course, had that unbelievable start and comes up with a steal here. Duncan, you rarely see this on a fast break and finishes down the other end. So already, several turnovers for the Miami Heat. He's a fast break machine. <laughs> that was a slow break right there. Duncan started game six, eight for eight from the field. Bosch steps out, that won't go. Again, the Spurs, the key theme for them is pace, push the ball. Parker on the floater, way short, way to quick outlet. And I thought he missed Danny Green wide open on the catch. James against Ginobili. And they call Ginobili for a bump. That'll be his first. Manuel Ginobili trying to come back from a rough, rough game six performance. And as for the first time, we check in with Doris Burke and Steve Javi. Steve, it's very hard not to notice Monty McCutcheon in his third game in this finals. What should we know about how these officials got here tonight? Well, Doris, the league assigns the top 12 rated referees over the regular season and playoffs to the finals, and four of those are the crew chiefs for games one through four. Tonight you see three of the four crew chiefs working the game, the best of the best here tonight. The best of the best and the most experienced, Mike. And Doris, I would assume they have some butterflies as well as Chalmers call for a foul. But all the players will tell you, once the game gets going, you run up and down the floor, start sweating, that stuff goes away. So Chalmers, with the jumper down the other end, picks up his first. Mario Chalmers had a strong game six, especially early when the Heat were struggling. Finished the game with 20 points. Ginobili trying to get on track to the basket and in and out. Good move, just wouldn't finish it. James, you see Green backing off. They dare James to shoot much in these finals. Chalmers runs into Ginobili, hits the side of the backboard. Good defense from Manu Ginobili. Really poor offensive start for both teams. Uncharacteristically not sharp. Missing open people, turning the ball over, taking some difficult shots. Could be the adrenaline flowing at an all-time rate here to start a game seven of the finals. Duncan calling for it. Now he's going to set a screen for Parker. Parker tells him to go away. Ginobili hits a three. And that has to feel huge for Manu Ginobili. Just nine points and eight turnovers in game six. And Mike Parker wanted an isolation against Chalmers. LeBron James giving help. Opened up the three by Ginobili. Mike Miller in and out. That rim seems tight down that end. He'd have had several of those already. Leonard drives and finishes. Good aggressive move from Leonard. He had 22 points in game six, and the Spurs have a seven-point lead. I think they got over game six. And he's certainly playing as Miller misfires there. Miami now two for seven from the field to start the game. Ginobili on the drive, the floater. In and out, Leonard trying to keep it alive, gets it back, comes up short. And it's going to be Miami ball. You look at the difference, Kawhi Leonard 21, Tim Duncan 37. Leonard, by the way, Second-year player already with four rebounds. James for the jump shot. That won't go. And that's exactly what Greg Popovich and the Spurs want. And it's also a good shot. That's a good shot by James. And it misses way, comes the other way, crossover. That's the second foul on Manu Ginobili. So he will have to go to the bench as Gary Neal checks in. Ginobili's trying to play Wade with a cushion. Gets bumped by the screen of Bosch into the path of Wade. 
and draws a second foul. And just five and a half in, Ginobili with two. Five to shoot for Wade. Duncan daring him. Wade drives past him, finds James. In and foul. Wade didn't settle. Makes something happen, and LeBron James will shoot the first two free throws of the game. There was a delayed switch that put Duncan on Wade. Duncan probably should have backed off and encouraged the jump shot. Instead, Duncan got blown by to the middle, which forced rotation and eventually the foul on Duncan. LeBron James was saying as he hits the free throw that he was exhausted at the end of game six and even admitted with about 25 seconds to go, he had thoughts, oh boy, nine and a half months of work down the drain, but let's see what happens. So many of the fans here also left the arena when it looked like San Antonio was about to clinch the championship. But obviously, a perfect example of why you play to the final buzzer. The Heat did that as James hits the free throw. And we'll have a timeout. 6-18 remaining in the first. Spurs by five. Time now for our Coors Light cold hard facts here are these NBA Finals which started here in Miami in this back and forth series. Tony Parker the big shot as the Spurs stole a victory on the road with that unbelievable 33 to 5 run in game two tied things up. Series then shifted to San Antonio the three point barrage in game three and the Spurs were up two to one. The big three with their best game scoring wise of the finals even things up at two. But San Antonio recovered again as Manu Ginobili without question his finest game of the postseason to put the Spurs up until that extraordinary game six where LeBron James took over in the fourth quarter and then Ray Allen hit one of the all time clutch shots in NBA history and here we are all tied up at three games apiece early substitution no point guard lineup by Miami which puts James on Parker. Kawhi Leonard sets. That three-pointer won't go. The three-pointer working so well earlier in the series for the San Antonio Spurs. Wade trying to take advantage of Neal, and he does. Great recognition by Wade to just do the old Mark Jackson back down in the low post. No passes involved. And gets himself a deep jump hook. That had the Mark Jackson of many, many years ago. <laughs> Neal. Tried to bank it in, Bosch the rebound. Way trying to get in the paint, finds James Cutting, good deflection. And that's the third turnover for Miami. Low pass, Parker able to get it, layup blocked by Bosch. Still Spurs ball. Chris Bosch made some key block shots in the fourth quarter in overtime in game six. Good effort in transition by Bosch to chase the play down and blocked the reverse layup by Parker. Boris Diaw checks in. Danny Green will sit. The Heat have done a great job on Green in game six and to start here. Paul oh, Leonard sneaks in and gets the bucket. As a coach, to give up plays off baseline out of bounds or sideline out of bounds is crushing. To give those layups up on dead ball plays, you can't be happy. Way to Bosch, Leonard on him. Bosch, good quick spin move, greeted by Duncan. Bosch thought he got hit. Here comes Parker the other way. Parker to Neal for three. In and out. I think Parker's got to use those opportunities to attack. With James on him, he's not going to have that many opportunities. He's got to go to it. Wade, that opportunity, his second field goal. Four points for Wade, three-point San Antonio lead. Duncan did a number on Bosch in the first half of game six. Gets the pass inside, another good look. Duncan to Diaw. Wade was starting to double team from the baseline side. Duncan has improved so much from when he first came into the league to now his awareness and passing ability spots Boris Diaw for the easy layup. Ray Allen in the game for the first time. Allen drives on Leonard. Plenty of contact there. But good defense from San Antonio's. Leonard grabs yet another rebound. He's got five already. 
nearly stripped. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Leonard. Good hands from Miami. Well, here comes Wade along the baseline. Good recognition by Duncan and Dial to connect. And Mike, the sloppy play right now, I really believe, is a still of a little bit of a hangover from all the energy that was expended in game six. We mentioned James said he was exhausted. Every other player looked that way as we wind down the shot clock. Two to shoot. James turns around, way short. Leonard the rebound. Throws it ahead to Parker. Good transition defense by the Heat. Pass deflected out of bounds. San Antonio ball. Diaw has consistently guarded James well. Look at the big cushion, then the back end. Diaw's a big body, forces the fade with little contest, but he gets the desired result, which is to force James to shoot the ball over the top. Meanwhile, Manu Ginobili with the two fouls will come in. Normally, Greg Popovich probably wouldn't put him in, but he's the backup point guard. The normal backup point guards, young players, that hard to trust in a game seven. So Ginobili out there, Neil the fake. Duncan looks up with a shot clock, sees he has plenty of time. Battier looking to help, Duncan backs in. Blocked by Anderson. Duncan thought he was fouled. The Birdman already contributing for the Heat. Chalmers tried to lob it in, and poked away by Duncan. Miami sloppy with the ball. Chalmers has had more turnovers in this series than assists. Duncan against Anderson, who's had his difficulties guarding him. Allen trying to help. Duncan takes his time, can't finish. D on the rebound and brings it back out. Both teams shooting poorly to start. 35% for San Antonio, 31 for Miami. Ginobili on the drive. And throws it to no one. Backcourt violation. Three turnovers for the Spurs. Timeout on the floor. Defense reigning, Jeff, here in the opening quarter. I say poor offense. <laughs> the defense is good. The block is good up top. Then he grazes his arm. 15 to 10. Spurs lead. ESPN's presentation of the 2013 NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by Grown Ups 2, in theaters July 12. Next Thursday, ESPN brings you the 2013 NBA Draft. Find out who the Cleveland Cavs will pick at number one. Live from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Coverage begins on ESPN at 7 p.m. Eastern. Here in Game 7 of the NBA Finals, LeBron James and the Heat down by five. For James, it's his fourth Finals at 07, swept as a member of the Cavaliers, the Spurs, the heavy favorites. Then in 2011, inexplicably struggle against the Mavericks. They lose in six. Last year against Oklahoma City, as dominant performance as you will find, the MVP. And you look at the numbers, which include two triple doubles, and anybody else would, would give anything for those kind of numbers. But, Jeff, the Spurs have done a pretty good job defensively on him. Terrific. They've reduced his efficiency somewhat. You're not going to stop the best player in the game, but you've got to try to slow him. They have done that, and thus they're in position to get a win. You saw those first three games, the last three, he has made his adjustments. Tiago splitter in the game. Ray Allen kicks it out. Battier puts up a three and knocks it down. And this is the lineup, if you're the Spurs, where you're just holding your breath. Both Duncan and Parker out. Where do you get the offense from? Kawhi Leonard, eight to shoot, finds Diaw. Boris Diaw drives past Battier, throws it up top to Ginobili. Ginobili steps back, a three-pointer. Too strong, Allen the rebound. This is also the lineup the Heat have had great success with as James drives out to Chalmers for three. Anderson on the follow. Although Miller has been on it instead of Battier, but this has been a great lineup for the Miami Heat. It's the idea 
of surrounding James with a lot of shooting. And when Battier makes, they can play him instead of Miller. Gary Neal way off. The Spurs perimeter game not there to start game seven. And it's so important for them to open things up by knocking down some jumpers. James throws up a knuckleball and a loose ball foul called on Boris Diaw. Well, Chris Anderson did not play in a couple of games, but he's back and contributing. Well, Splitter got caught on Chalmers out of the paint. No size on Anderson. The easy putback. Anderson did not play games four and five. And Eric Spolster went with small ball. Played a role in game six. Allen kicks it out. Battier tries again. It's good. Same Battier. Two for two from downtown. And an 8-0 run as the Heat had their first lead of the night. Ginobili stripped by Chalmers. And still Spurs ball. Battier hit three threes in game six. Great play by Ray Allen. Shane Battier wide open has not taken a two-point shot in the series and has finally gotten on track with his shooting after a horrible slump. Leonard guarded by James, drives, goes to the basket, draws the foul. Rick Papovich would like to see this very humble, very quiet second-year player be more aggressive, especially with this lineup on the floor. He's had good looks to start this game. Beats James off the dribble. They call James for a little push in the back. Kawhi Leonard goes to the free throw line. Leonard, just 21 years old, played his college ball at San Diego State, drafted by Indiana, and then traded by Indiana to San Antonio for one of Greg Popovich's favorite players, George Hill. And he has been enormous for this team, one of the most talented young defenders in the NBA who's got an unbelievable upside on the offensive end. He's also such a great rebounder. And his offense has come so far in two years. He missed one of the two free throws down the stretch in game six that perhaps could have made the difference between the Spurs celebrating an NBA championship or having this game seven. He played so well in that game. A magnificent game for Leonard. A couple of plays here and there made the difference in game six. Chalmers tied up good help defense from Splitter. And Birdman, nope. They wave it off. A 24 second by, or the quarter comes to an end. As Anderson tried to tip it into the buzzer. A low scoring, poor shooting first quarter. Tim Duncan, a rare sight of steal and a fast break dunk. Meanwhile, Dwayne Wade aggressive early. Both teams shooting poorly, both teams turning it over a little bit, but the intensity's been there. Shane Battier, a big three, heat by two. Mike, thank you. Pop, 12 minutes in, what have you seen from your men? Uh, we started out with very good defense and uh, ended the quarter with real bad offense. Pop, thank you. Mike. Yeah, Doris, they missed 11 of their final 13 shots from the field. Wade goes right at green, back out Allen. Chalmers, looks like he made a double dribble there. Pass out to Allen, seven to shoot. Ginobili got a hand on it. And that's where Ginobili can be such a factor. Wade tips it out, but right to Ginobili. Green will try a three. And Danny Green has not been a factor in the last game plus. 0 for 3 to start tonight. Wade open, way off. And a loose ball foul is going to go against Splitter. Thiago Splitter was taken out of the starting lineup a couple of games ago for Ginobili. And he misses the block out initially and then holds his arm enhanced by the acting of Chris Anderson. But Mike, this to me has the feel of a Lakers Celtic game seven where the offense just wasn't there and it was just a grind out game. That 
Boye, three for three from downtown. Struggling enormously shooting the ball for most of these playoffs. Last couple of games, he's come alive. And his defense, always so critical. A five-point Miami lead. It's been a 12-point turnaround. They had trailed by seven in the opening minutes. Splitter, wild shot. Wade tried to lob it in. Again, deflected. Green got a piece of it. Here's Parker. Sidesteps Battier. Pretty move from Tony Parker. He's got to get going, particularly in transition. When he gets those opportunities, he can't be hesitant. He can't be trying to bring his shooters into the game. He's got to attack and play off instinct. Parker just 6 of 23 from the field in game six, but had some key buckets late to put the Spurs up by five with about 21 seconds to go. Allen off the dribble. Swatted away from behind by Neal. Spurs forcing turnovers. That's now seven Miami turnovers. Nice feed. Parker to splitter. And now Eric Spolster wants a timeout as they cut the lead to one. I mean, this is what we've seen from Tony Parker last couple of possessions throughout the playoffs, Jeff. When he's in the game, when James is not, he's got to be ultra aggressive. There he brings the second defender to him, drops it off to Tiago Splitter, and then in transition, wisely sidesteps Battier and uses body to shield the ball. And the lead is now one. Miami by one early second quarter at the American Airlines Arena, which you would figure on a game seven of the NBA Finals. The stars will be out. The great Jack Nicholas and his wife Barbara in attendance, sitting a couple rows behind us. Cal Ripken sitting near the court, watching the Miami Heat. And Bill Russell, who had his record broken tonight, at least one of his records, and that being the most game sevens played in NBA history, Ray Allen now playing in his 11th as Russell played in 10. And you know what Russell's record was in those 10? 10 and 0. Yeah, including 5 and 0 in game seven of the NBA Finals. You look up some of the numbers, they're all just spectacular. As a foul away from ball. He also holds the record for most rebounds ever in a game seven of the NBA Finals. That's 40. 40 rebounds in game seven of the finals. I think that's safe. Now you know the guys back then couldn't shoot at all, <laughs> and they did play fast. Meanwhile, Duncan just picked up his second foul, stays in the game, puts a hand up. Rebound goes inside for Bosch. Wade will try again. Allen off the dribble on the pull up. Short Wade trying to keep it alive and does. Good second effort. Ray Allen, not that time. Wade keeping it alive again. And Chalmers will reset. Dwayne Wade already with six rebounds. Three in the sequence. Chalmers, oh, beautiful move. Great effort sequence by the Miami Heat on the board. Dwayne Wade really struggling offensively, but now making effort plays just like that block. Rebounds on the offensive glass and blocks on the defensive end. Well, good move by Chalmers. Very aggressive in the pick and roll, a la Tony Parker, using his body to shield the shot blocker and hit the twisting layup. It all set up by Wade's second and third efforts on that possession. Pass to Parker, foul by Bosch. And that's two fouls on Chris Bosch. Parker will go to the free throw line. James getting his rest. He played the entire second half in overtime of game six. Said it was the greatest game he'd ever been a part of. 
Even Greg Popovich called game six a hell of a game, and that was right after when you knew he was sick to his stomach. And as Parker hits the free throw. And the extra five minutes piling up for a number of players. The guys like Leonard, he's young, he's 21, he can play. Tim Duncan, that's a lot of minutes for Duncan. Of course, James playing 50 to lead everyone. How about, you know, you look at game six, who says it's a young man's game? Tim Duncan, who's 37, had 30 points, 17 rebounds. Ray Allen, who's 37, had one of the most clutch shots we've ever seen. The old guy's doing rather well. Wade knocks that one down. Chalmers back on Parker, even though James is in the game. Leonard drives, foul, basket won't count. On the way to the basket is the foul. Greg Popovich wanted a continuation. And let's listen to Greg Popovich. Be here all night long, all right? Each possession, make it a good one with aggressiveness and playing with each other. It's, how, it's when we're at our best. New York. Danny Green trying to get going off the mark. Battier the rebound. But he's being forced to do what he doesn't do best, which is put the ball on the ground. Chalmers way off. Duncan the rebound. Quick outlet to Green. Back out Parker. Again, good transition. Transition defense from Miami. Parker up and under and an easy two for Parker every time he gets a point guard on him he has to think this is my time Wade steps back and nails it why for Eric Spolstra LeBron James has been very successful guarding Parker but it'd be hard for him to put him on him all game correct well it would be more taxing energy wise as Bosch fouls Duncan and now has three. And Wade shaken up. He took an inadvertent shot from Duncan as he tried to double team. Grabbed the back of his neck. And three fouls on Chris Bosch. And Duncan has been at his best when he's made his move decisively. There he caught, went, took the bump, and kissed it in off the glass. And Mike, you said, is it a young man's game or, or an old man's game? It's a great player's game. And Tim Duncan, because his game is so rock solid fundamentally, he's able to age gracefully. And the 37 in his 16th year made first team All-NBA once again and has his team in the NBA Finals with a game seven. Rebound, Gary Neal. Nearly deflected, Duncan ahead to Green. Both teams have been sloppy with the ball. Defense certainly a part of that. Anderson on Duncan. Backs in, kicks it out. Parker fumbled the catch. Shot clock at four. James on him, finds Duncan. Duncan has to put it up. Will not get it off the time he turns it over. There was probably five mishandles of the ball in that possession. Like you said, Mike, some really good defense some just very poor fundamental ball handling. James misses and a loose ball foul against Miami. It'll be their 14th foul. Kawhi Leonard, who's done a superb job on James so much of the series, defended him well. A mishandle by Parker. A mishandle by Duncan. And that doesn't even include the Danny Green deflected pass initially when he came down trying to enter the ball to Tim Duncan in the post. That last foul was Anderson's first. A low scoring first half. Parker tried to get fancy and James couldn't control it. Spurs will have 11 to shoot. When James is on Parker, they don't want Duncan setting the screen. They want Miller's man. Parker right there tried a very unusual split behind the back. I've never seen him do that. Led to a near turnover. Greg Popovich wants a time. And he can't be happy with the efficiency. Neither coach can. Turnovers, low shooting percentage, and some pretty strong defense. All even at 27. 
Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. To be back here now and have a chance to win a championship is just a, a great feeling. It really means a lot to be the last man standing. I think every basketball player uh, wish they can experience that at least one time in their career. Tony Parker and the Spurs tied at 27 here in the second quarter of Game 7. Danny Crawford, NBA Finals referee, talking to a couple NBA Finals MVPs when the long arm of the law for San Antonio comes in. Get out of there and get to the huddle, says another NBA Finals MVP. You know, Jeff, you see the way this game is being played. I mean, the effort is certainly there. They're getting after each other. But you seem to think that right now, these players look pretty tired. They are early. running in mud right now for the most part. There are some guys like Dwayne Wade who looks energetic. James and a foul. Took a hard hit, put it in, and a chance for a three-point play. It has looked like that, even for some of these young guys. Game six took so much out of them, but James still showing his power here. Well, this is when he's at his best in the open court with seams. San Antonio didn't get back and shut off that seam and the incredible strength to take the bump and finish. And James was off to a very, very rough start offensively. He was one for his first five before converting that three-point play. Now here's that five-man set for Miami that has had the big runs, the 33-5 run in game two. And the big run in the fourth quarter of game six. Duncan, quick move, can't finish. Chalmers the rebound. Ray Allen off the dribble. Mike Miller, a three. In and out. That's the third one for Miami. And it rattled in and out of the rim. Parker quickly down the lane. Can't finish. Allen the rebound. Parker falls. Eric Spolster telling his team to push the ball. Both coaches want an up-tempo. But the ball's come to a stop a lot more. James for three! And if you're San Antonio, you can't overreact to the made three. You have to stick with your game plan. And that's make him beat you from the outside. Chalmers, who's been a ball hawk. You know, we talk about the big three and the future Hall of Famers. Big game. I want Mario Chalmers on my side. He is not afraid of the moment. He's not afraid, but he has played inconsistently in this series. He was off to a rough start. He played a good game, two and six. The middle three, not so well. So it's been a mixed bag a little bit. Danny Crawford going over to check. Somebody's got some blood. I believe it's Parker. So they'll get 30 seconds. As Will Sevening will try and patch him up. Well, again, daring James to shoot. He backs up. I mean, these are like practice shots. He knocks it in. But if you're San Antonio, this is what you're willing to live with. You can't take away everything from a great player. He's only shooting 29% from three point range in these finals. He shot well from downtown during the regular season in a career high 41 percent but he's been off in much of the playoffs from long distance and as he's told us many times when he gets a layup like he did on the previous possession the jump shot then becomes more comfortable Leonard Green Duncan Gary Neal and Parker on for San Antonio and they have they, seven to shoot and they don't have James on Parker right now. He's going to have to put it up. Realizes it just gets it off and banks it in. He had no idea the shot clock was winding down. Then at the very last split second, he went up. Chalmers. 
pulls up, foul line jumper. Nice soft touch from Mario Chalmers. He's got six points. Chalmers on Parker. Neal, travel. Good double team from Anderson and Miller. Tim Duncan telling Gary Neal to shoot the ball. <laughs> and his I don't request. know if he could hear him, but he could see him. And Parker out for another rest, Mike. Trying to get him enough. James kicks it out. Miller chased off the three-pointer. Chalmers sets. Chalmers, that three won't go. Duncan the rebound. Now, Tony Parker was one of those players at the end of game six who looked absolutely gassed. Duncan gets the feed. Can't finish, but a foul. And Tim Duncan will head to the free throw line. Now you've got, as a coach, Jeff, because so many guys are absolutely tired with the grueling style of play that's gone on. You know, and even though it's a game seven, you can't have a guy out there in the fourth quarter that's absolutely exhausted. You got to give him a little rest early, right? You do, but you have to manage it because, Mike, you might have guys rested and be down 12 to 14 going into the fourth quarter. I think the Heat can be a little bit more liberal in their substitutions. San Antonio, with Green being taken out of it and Neal rather ineffective the last couple games, they just don't have the weaponry to withstand long droughts. Duncan, nine points, five rebounds, couple of assists. Miami's lead is three. Coming up on four remaining here in the first half. Miller, quick catch and shoot. Too strong. And Kawhi Leonard with seven rebounds already. Crowd wanted to travel. Leonard looked like he got bumped. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Battier back in there again pretty soon. Having made all three of his threes. Leonard fakes, drives past James, tries to dunk it, won't go. Rebound Leonard, back up, blocked from behind by Anderson. Leonard gets another rebound, dribbles it off his foot. They dive on the floor. Anderson has it, heat ball. Deflected by Green, but right to Wade. Wade puts it in. I like the rhythm Wade is playing with offensively. Oh, there's vintage Manu Ginobili. Wade's made three jumpers, Mike, from that same area, isolating and just taking the rhythm pull-up, which they're inviting him to take. And Eric Spolster wants a timeout. Ten points, six rebounds for Dwayne Wade. And the jumper's working. He got going with some effort plays. But they've been giving him these same jump shots, enticing him to take it. His rhythm is there, his balance is there tonight. Just over three minutes remaining, second quarter here in game seven. Miami Heat leading by three. The Spurs desperately need a strong game from Mono Ginobili, and this is what we're used to seeing from Ginobili from years past. Well, look at the agility to be able to sidestep Anderson and then gather and finish. He was so candid after game six. Again, the eight turnovers. He said he was devastated, but Tony Parker was also saying he's seen Ginobili like that. He takes losses as hard as anybody, but also bounces back quicker than most. And Dennis Haslam, who was a did not play in game six, is in the game. Allen lost it, and a foul is going to go against Ray Allen. That's his first after he turns it over. 
And now we'll have a full timeout with just under three remaining. Three-point game here in the second. ESPN's presentation of the 2013 NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by the new film World War Z. In theaters everywhere tomorrow. This film is rated PG-13. Tuesday at 8 Eastern, ESPN2 brings you the WNBA. Liana Taurasi, Brittany Griner, and the Phoenix Mercury visit the San Antonio Silver Stars. Here tonight in Miami, in Game 7, the Heat leading by three. Dwayne Wade right now leading them in scoring. And he got started with a couple of offensive rebounds, that block shot, and then he made three mid-range jumpers. These are the shots, as we've said over and over, that San Antonio was willing to give both James and Wade. Wade here is off to a terrific start. 10.6 rebounds. He hurt his left knee in the first half of game six and was late coming out to start the third quarter. Was not in the lineup when the third quarter started. That was the left knee that gave him problems last year. Had surgery in the offseason. He's been bothered by the right knee all this playoff. But he says he's fine and ready to go as Duncan knocks down the free throw. Duncan the first spur in double figures. Duncan his best year at the free throw line. He had his ups and downs throughout his career. But five for five so far tonight. Ray Allen kicks it out. James sets three pointer. It's good. His second three pointer of the game. Miami five for 12 from downtown. Ginobili. Good help defense from Haslam. Green sidesteps, blocked but foul. And Danny Green trying to get himself going by hitting a couple of free throws as Haslam picks up his first. Again, forcing Green to put the ball on the ground, and that's a clean block. You don't think he fouled him right before, right in here? That's not a foul? He called it on Haslam. No, I mean Haslam down low. Man, you and Steve Jabby got to get your story straight. When I say they fouled Danny Green low, you said, no, you don't foul. If it's blocked up top, there's no foul below. Now you're saying he's fouled below, even with the block clean up top. I don't understand what I'm supposed to be looking at, you two officials. <laughs> got to get your story straight. <laughs> Green hits the free throw. I think he finds you... Humorous. <laughs> he didn't so much when I was coaching. <laughs> Why Leonard knocks it away. James able to ward him off. Now you see Leonard backing up. Same thing for Green. They're daring him to shoot, but he's hit two. Tries another. Not that time. Leonard the rebound. His tenth rebound in the first half. Ginobili pushing. Finds Duncan. And that's the pace San Antonio wants. And we're tied at 40. Nice read by Ginobili on the penetration to drop it off to Duncan. Neal denying Allen. Wade. And again, you see Leonard back off. Another three. And he hit his first two. Missed his next two. Ginobili again on the drive. Running shot. Blocking foul call on Haslam. And Ginobili's aggressiveness making things happen for San Antonio right now. The push going down looked like it was going to be a charge. And at the last second, Manu Ginobili jumps to the side. 
And to me, that's either a no call or a defensive foul. But when that offensive player avoids the contact by jumping to the side, it can't be an offensive foul. And he's still, he's still moving. His body is moving to the right. No, I, I think that's the right call. I like when we agree. But seriously, at halftime, you and Steve get together <laughs> about the down low or up high. Haslam sits down. Spurs have hit 12 consecutive free throws. Free throws a sore spot after two big misses. Oh, wait. Nice shot there. He's got 12. Two big misses in the final minute for San Antonio in game six. All even at 42. And a foul away from the ball. I believe it's on Chalmers. And they're in the penalty. I love how Wade, after a little bit of a sluggish start, has gotten going. A really well-defended jump hook by Danny Green. And you can forget sometimes just how good Dwayne Wade is when he's had these up-and-down struggles throughout the playoffs. Well, he's got 12 points already. We've got the sprint halftime report coming up. Magic Johnson, Michael Wilbon, Jalen Rose, and Bill Simmons getting ready. Uh, talk about the first half here of game seven right here in the American Airlines Arena and free throw shooting huge 15 attempts from the line for San Antonio only three for Miami Miami has also turned the ball over but look at Miami's shot distribution they've shot a lot more three-pointers tonight than San Antonio has they're packing it in like they did earlier in this finals Wade spins, fires, shot off the mark. James easily tips it in with Parker on him. That's the negative of switching. It leaves you mismatch on the offensive board. Parker, head fake. Nice defense from Battier. Green can't get a clean, clean look. Misses that floater. He's 0 for 5. Green, who was just absolutely marvelous in the first five games. They have geared their defense to stop him. Eric Sposter tells Chalmers, we don't have a 20-second timeout. We used it already. Meanwhile, the Spurs have a foul to give here. I wouldn't give it with Kawhi Leonard. Wade fakes, pulls up. It's good. With eight-tenths of a second remaining. Green fires. And the first half of Game 7 comes to an end. Dwayne Wade with 14 points that's as much as he scored in the entire game six seven of 12 from the field he also had six rebounds an aggressive first half for Dwayne Wade meanwhile LeBron James had 11 points in the second quarter 15 total Duncan and Parker in double figures and we go to Doris with Wade Dwayne after a sluggish start what got you started just being aggressive um, you know coach played the side off for me a little bit give me opportunity to use my ability to, you know, get separation from my defender and uh, making shots. How do you and LeBron determine the right balance between getting to the rim and the jumpers they're conceding? Well, you know, we're um, we're professionals. We're guys who's, who's all our career guys are sacked off us, so we just got to mix it up. Some you got to take. Some you got to be aggressive. You got to get to something else. You're tired. Go get a rest. Yeah, a little bit. A little <laughs> Mike. Breathing heavy, Doris, as Wade heads to the locker room in a two-point game. A sprint halftime report coming up next is Wade and James, 21 of the last 23 points for Miami. The star players coming to the forefront here in game seven. Tim Duncan, another strong start. He had 13. But Wade, as Jeff has said throughout the first half, in a nice rhythm. LeBron James in the heat with the lead, but only two. Game seven of the NBA Finals from Miami. The Sprint Halftime Report coming up after these messages. Halftime game seven of the NBA Finals. Tim Duncan trying to focus here if the first half is teamed down by two it's 46 44 Dwayne Wade with a strong first couple of quarters 
As these two teams battle for an NBA title, our Qualcomm Snapdragon processors first half stats, Miami shooting better from the field, but the free throw disparity huge for San Antonio to keep them in the game, and they're doing a solid job getting their points in the paint. As we get set for the third quarter, hi again, everyone, with Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Breen on hand. We'll check in with Doris Burke in just a moment. We had such a magnificent game in game six. Ragged play here in game seven, certainly close, but LeBron James and Dwayne Wade finding ways to get things done throughout this ragged play. Yeah, it was a struggle for both teams, particularly in the first quarter. Second quarter, much better offensive basketball. Look at the power of LeBron James going through the arm of Kawhi Leonard and then taking on the body of Danny Green. And then he doesn't shoot the ball on the way up. He's almost touching the floor and still the strength to get the roll. And then, like we've said, they're inviting them to take those perimeter jump shots. He made a couple threes in the first half. And Dwayne Wade, three pull-ups and then this nice little spin back for the jump hook. Both those guys playing efficient offensive basketball. And their numbers fresh off the wire, served to you by KFC. Meanwhile, for San Antonio, Duncan and Parker getting it done. Tony Parker has to score for them to win, has to be aggressive. He does, and they're going to play through their stars. Tim Duncan with the nice pass to Boris Diaw and Ginobili. The terrific wraparound pass off the dribble penetration to Duncan. They've got 24 paint points. They haven't shot it well from the perimeter, but they're at their best when they attack early and when Parker is aggressive. Again, Tony Parker, when he has the point guards on him, he's got to be ultra aggressive. Spurs have had trouble getting that three-point game going. He'd have done an excellent job on Danny Green. Spurs just two three-pointers in that first half. Shot clock at four. Nice feed inside. Bosch is shot way off. And Kawhi Leonard, he is just phenomenal on the boards, Jeff. 11 rebounds. And that one-handed little jump hook in the paint, he's become very adept at. Now that is a big-time move, to drive it left, come to a stop, and spin away from James for the little jump hook. Terrific finish. By the way, Leonard, nine times in these playoffs, he's had double-figure rebounds. He had eight all regular season. Wade nearly stripped by Parker. Ball batted out of bounds. They have eight to shoot. Wade a little shaken up on the play. Well, you look at the balance here. Kawhi Leonard, good stop. Pivot away. Little jump hook. Very nice play by Leonard. Chalmers on the drive. The runner from Mario Chalmers. Always that little soft touch. When he's aggressive off the pick and roll game, He's so much better where he's decisive. They're laying back. They're going to allow him to shoot those type of shots. He's got to keep probing the defense. They like Leonard the matchup. Count it and a foul. When LeBron James is not on him, they want him to be aggressive. Well, Greg Popovich spoke about that earlier tonight, saying Kawhi Leonard's got to get in the post when they downsize on him. Clearly, Mike Miller hits him on the arm. Leonard extends up and knocks in the two. Leonard has huge hands. When he was in high school, they bought, he was a wide receiver on the team as James gets the rebound, but they couldn't get wide receiver gloves to fit him. They had a special order, extra, extra, extra large to get gloves to fit him. Just huge hands. Mike Miller for three, won't go. Duncan the rebound. Why do you need receiver gloves anymore? Fred Boletnikoff didn't need receiver gloves. Just catch the ball with your hands. I don't get that anymore. The game has changed. Duncan, the runner, can't finish. Miller the rebound. Good defense by Bosch with the three fouls. Inside Wade, try to get it to James. Parker deflects it. James steps wide open for three. That's three three-pointers for LeBron James. And those are like practice shots. No one is even close to it. Parker looking for Duncan. Ginobili flips it up and in. One of those patented Ginobili moves. Looked like he's out of control. Going to fall down, lose the ball, and he gets a layup. 
on some of those dribble penetrations, Bosch is not able to get off of Duncan's body to give the appropriate help on the penetration. Chalmers draws the foul on Parker. First foul on Tony Parker. You see, Bosch should be that next help man, but because he bangs into Duncan, Ginobili has the easy layup. Ginobili, by the way, no turnovers so far after the game where he had a career high eight. Overall, just six turnovers for San Antonio. Ginobili had that marvelous game five. And then the nightmare game six. And a good solid start here to game seven. Mario Chalmers with eight points. Make that nine. Two point heat lead. Early in the third. Ginobili fakes a three. Finds Leonard. Leonard again. That one handed shot. And again, going to the pick and roll game with Leonard setting the screen on James versus Duncan. Now he's guarding James. Parker helps. Chalmers sets for three. That one way off. Danny Green tracks it down behind his back. Green on the drive. Bad pass through it right to Miller. And here's Wade down the other end for a dunk. And that's such a costly turnover against a team like the Miami Heat. Seven turnovers for San Antonio. Parker. Duncan single coverage turns. Puts it up. Won't go. Good defense from Bosch. James pass deflected by Leonard. Parker on the drive, strip ball knocked out of bounds, and still San Antonio ball. Boy, active hands on both teams all night long. Yeah, and just a poor decision by Danny Green and a poor, poor decision by Kawhi Leonard to commit up to James, not protect the basket. Good play by James to find Wade, cutting for the fast break dunk. Have watched the season come down to one game. The championship on the line tonight. And Jeff, this game is, is there for the taking. Neither team has been sharp. They both look a little fatigued at times. But neither team can take control. Duncan turns, shoots, and hits. The hard part with Duncan on that block is if you want to take his middle move, then he counters back to his right-hand jump hook. I think Bosch is playing him well there by making him take that jumper to the middle. Wade kicks it out. Chalmers fakes the three. Now with a hand in his face, way short air ball. Duncan the rebound. Parker tries to push. The heat transition defense has been excellent. Danny Green for three. Won't go. Ginobili tips it the right to Wade. Green now 0 for 7 from the field. He was one for seven in game six. They really tried to gear to stop him his way, just lost it. He's mad at one of his teammates. He's mad at Bosch because he came into the pick and roll where he just wanted to back Parker down and isolate. And a turnover number 10 for Miami. Gary Neal tried to get in, but did not get to the scores table in time. And if you're Greg Popovich, you have a tough decision. How long do you ride Danny Green? Do you believe in his shooting to be able to get hot? He's obviously struggled with the additional attention defensively that's been given to him. Green double teamed in a bad spot, looking for someone to throw it to. And he stepped out of bounds. Oh no, a timeout was called. Tony Parker called a 22nd timeout. Don't know if you want to burn those here, but it will avoid a turnover at this particular moment. Well, we'll take a quick break. They'll have six to shoot when we come back. The three-point game. Spurs have six to shoot. 
Ginobili finds Duncan. Duncan inside. Misses and Bosch right there. Wade had an impact on that shot attempt. Terrific hustle from Wade. Helping out on defense. Wade bangs in, bangs in, misses. Duncan the rebound. Parker, just three of eight from the field. Ginobili fakes the three. Picks up his dribble. Five to shoot. Duncan wants the ball. Green fires and can't hit. Midway through the third quarter. Game seven is tied. James kicks it out. Wade fakes across the lane. Flips it up and in. And the three or four jumpers he's made tonight just got Ginobili to commit a little further out, which allowed him that small crease to drive the ball. He's got 18. Duncan trying to seal Bosch. Parker can't get it to him. Leonard will try a three. That won't go. Rebound tipped and taken by Green. Goes out, three-pointer. Puts it in. Danny Green finally gets one to go. He was 0 for 8, and the Spurs go up by one. And I'd like to see Kawhi Leonard more in the low post against Mike Miller than shooting the three. James against Leonard. Ginobili doubles. They kick it to Chalmers. Chalmers was out of bounds when he caught it. Spurs get it back. Well, the long rebound, much like the Ray Allen, Rebound bounces to Danny Green and balances up, and that's really his first clean look all night, and he's coming out as Miami goes to their no-point guard offense. Well, it's been a coming-out party for Green, but the last two games with all the defense geared to stop him has been very effective. Green set a finals record for most threes made in a single NBA finals. He shattered the record. He's got 27 in the seven games. Parker pulls back. James back on him. Five to shoot. Parker lost it, gets it back, and he stepped out of bounds. Eighth San Antonio turnover. Again, neither, there's just no sharpness tonight. The defense part of it, but not all of it. I really think this has been such a well-played offensive series, even against very good defense. Tonight, I think it's more bad offense than it is great defense. Allen off the screen. James will try another three. Hucks it in. LeBron James, fourth three-pointer of the game. And the Heat back up by two. Twenty one for James D hours in with Neil Parker Duncan and Kawhi Leonard Parker on the pull up short way short rebound tipped all the way out to Neil and a new 24 and as we go under the four minute mark of the third quarter Parker tries again flips it up shot block box got a piece of it here comes Allen James, fouled by Neal, the shot won't count. Only the third team foul against San Antonio. The Heat will take it out of bounds. Smart decision by Neal on that foul. Here, LeBron James again. The cushion. I like that he's not being indecisive. Catch and shoot, play off your instincts, trust your skill level. Leonard daring him. Ray Allen and James, again, look how far off they're playing. He'll try it again. It's good! LeBron James making the Spurs pay a five-point heat lead. Leonard, oh, count it, out of foul. A gorgeous move from Kawhi Leonard and a chance for a three-point play. And much needed. And now, Greg Popovich and his staff have a big decision. 
as we see Kawhi Leonard give them a much needed three point play opportunity as Bosch gets his fourth foul. Or no, is that Bosch on the foul? No, not Bosch. No, it's Ray Allen. And Allen's second. What a shot from Leonard. But they have to decide how much longer when he's behind the three point line do you cushion him like that? When he catches it in the two point range, you do want to cushion him. But be at the three, how much longer do you cushion him? James drives hard to the basket and draws the foul. LeBron James fired up right now. You see him, Ray Allen, give it right back to me. Wanted it right back. And the strength, the power through Kawhi Leonard. James in the first six games of these finals had just seven three-pointers, seven of 24. But he's five of seven from downtown as he's serenaded with MVP chance. He has had back-to-back -back MVPs. He's looking for back-to-back -back championships. They do realize that the award's already been given out, right? He got the award. Perhaps they're just reminding him. Oh, it's a reminder. Okay. 25 points. He's perfect from the line. Four for four. Battier, Anderson, Ray Allen, Chalmers, and James out there for Miami. Boris Diaw will try a three. That's good. Boris Diaw from downtown. And with under three minutes to go, it's back to a one-point game. In and out, halfway down. By the way, for Dia, that's only his fifth three-pointer of the playoffs. Nice entry pass to Duncan. And the Spurs regain the lead. And because Dia made the three, they charged at him and opened up his best skill, which is the pass. High low to Duncan off a great seal and the layup. And Mike, San Antonio looked like they were teetering right there. They have regathered themselves with a big time three and Boris Dia. Tremendous high-low pass to Tim Duncan. And Diaw with a three-pointer before that. Some big minutes here for Boris Diaw. Spurs up one, two and a half to play here in game seven. Coming up tonight on ESPN Sports Center, we'll follow our game with complete post-game coverage of Game Seven and the championship trophy presentation here from Miami. There's LeBron James and the Heat trying to go back to back. Five threes. No one in remotely in the same area on any of these threes. These are like practice shots. The Heat have already taken 21 threes. James has taken eight. And it will be interesting to see if and when San Antonio decides to adjust and try to close that space, which then could lead to more dribble drive opportunities. Two and a half remaining here in this third quarter. Parker right now on the bench. Duncan still on the floor. Leonard takes it away from Chalmers. Ginobili looking to push, drives down the lane. Puts it up, won't go, but a foul on Anderson. And two free throws coming up from Manu Ginobili as Anderson picks up his second. Ginobili quietly has bounced back with a very efficient night. Nine points, three of six from the field. Chalmers just lost it, and Leonard with a quick reaction. Free throws critical in this game. San Antonio 16 for 18. Miami's only been there seven times. Well, the Spur players all said they weren't worried about him bouncing back. One of the most competitive players who has ever suited up in the NBA.
as the shot clock is now out at both ends of the floor. And Mike, I remember back in 99 when we were playing the Spurs, we had to play the last game, the final game of that series with shot clock like they used to on the ends of the floor. And it was impossible for the players to get accustomed to start finding the shot clock as it wound down. The old fashioned way, and you'd see players, I do remember that, players would, as Bill Russell certainly remembers that. <laughs> and seems real excited so <laughs> so far about the game. Well, he's been to so many game sevens and so many game seven finals, it's old hat for him. So they've now fixed it. The clock's back up. There's 2.16 remaining here in the third. A one point San Antonio lead. Make that two. They just haven't put it up on the board after Ginobili's first free throw. There it is. Two points. Here in the building, it was 65 64. Why have a second? Remind you to visit NBA.com and NBA TV for complete NBA draft 2013 coverage. Draft week begins Monday only on NBA TV. Can't wait to see who's going to be the first pick in that draft. Ginobili hits the second. A 7 0 run by San Antonio. They are up by three. There has not been a double digit lead in this game. Largest lead is seven. That was the Spurs in the opening minutes. James pulls up, puts it in. 28 points for LeBron James, who has been extraordinary in game sevens and elimination games in his career. Ginobili, Neil fakes. Neil drives the floater, won't go. Diaw. And a loose ball foul against San Antonio. It's Diaw. His second. Again, playing the pick and roll soft. You can't go under at six feet. Look where Kawhi Leonard's trying to go under. Again, that's just a free throw line pull up. James on the attack. Ray Allen gets a look. Too strong. And Duncan the rebound. Allen after his. Heroics in game six, 0 for 4 with three turnovers here in game seven. Neal fires in and out. Duncan trying to keep it alive, but James able to hold on. James, second effort, kicks it out. Battier. James says, go through. Again, daring him to shoot the three. This time a two pointer way off the mark a brick Ginobili gets a running start the difference in the last three pick and rolls Kawhi Leonard has gone over the top. Diaw another rebound Neal off the drive swooping shot is good tough shot from Gary Neal his second field goal and Magic Johnson upstairs must be smiling with visions of his running hook shot against the Celtics <laughs> final minute third quarter. Allen tied up. James open up top. Chalmers Battier for three. Bang! Tie game with 27 seconds left in the third. And what a response tonight by Shane Battier. Mentally strong, had a struggle in the playoffs to make all four three pointers in the biggest game of the season. It has always been teams just play better when he's on the floor. Ginobili the drive, swooping shot. Oh, what an angle to back it in with 5.2 remaining. Chalmers racing up the floor, sets, fires, three pointer. Oh, he backs it in at the buzzer. Mario Chalmers gives the Heat a one point lead as we head to the fourth quarter. They'll review it, but he got it off in time. Chalmers now with 12 points, had a couple of difficult turnovers here in the third, but never afraid to take the big shot. One quarter to go in the NBA season. The championship on the line. We head to the fourth quarter of a one-point game. This presentation of the NBA Finals continues after this message and a word 
from our ABC stations. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires for game-changing traction inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Heat by one, game seven of the NBA Finals as we get set to start the fourth quarter moments ago. Doris with Eric Spolstra. Mike, thank you. Eric, what will the final 12 minutes come down to? Well, we have to defend and finish our defense. We have a one-point lead in our building right now. Uh, the best defensive quarter of the series. Eric, thank you. Mike. All right, Doris. Well, we've appealed to the NBA to extend the series to a best of 11. And right now, we're awaiting word on that decision. Where the fans have been treated to what a competitive series. And Duncan and Parker are resting, but this is a change. Diaw at center instead of splitter. Mark and Duncan on the bench at the same time. Leonard misses Wade the rebound. It's James and Wade with Anderson, Battier, and Chalmers for the Miami Heat. James kicks it out in the corner. Battier puts it in. Five for five for Battier. Danny Green off the dribble. Blocked from behind by Wade. And I love this. Tim Duncan coming right back in. Great find by James. If you're Gary Neal, you don't even slow down in your closeout on Battier. You make him put the ball on the ground just like they're doing to Danny Green. Ginobili misses. Battier 6 for 19 in the finals until tonight. A perfect 5 for 5. Shades of his performance in last year's NBA Finals when he was a big part of the victory against Oklahoma City. Four to shoot. James, another one. Green, the weak side rebound. Neal ahead to Ginobili. He'll try another three. Leonard on the follow. And the Spurs back within two. Parker set to check back in as well. And he's got a lot of game minute rest and real time rest before he's come back in. There should be no reason he can't play with a great level of offensive energy. Chalmers off a screen, wide open jumper, in and out. Anderson's tip won't go. And a loose ball foul called on Duncan, his third. How about Kawhi Leonard in his first NBA Finals? The way this young man has played. Well, again, in transition, no one's matched up. He gets the free run to the rim. An easy putback by Leonard. And on the other end, a second shot for Chris Anderson. Anderson missing the free throw. Leonard, by the way, 16 points and 12 rebounds. And the bad man with his usual energy. One for two from the line. Miami by three. Parker's back in. In fact, the starting lineup on the court right now for San Antonio. Danny Green. Thomas stays close to him, not letting him shoot. Leonard fakes. Lost it, and a reach-in foul call. If James is on Parker, then Ginobili has to be more assertive offensively. James is second foul, first team foul. And the Chalmers is on Ginobili. They've got to go at that matchup. Duncan sets the high screen. Ginobili barrels into Anderson. Offensive foul. Excellent defense from Chris Anderson. Three fouls on Ginobili. Good recognition by Anderson. Knowing that Ginobili beat him to that middle of the floor, read the play, and took the hard hit. Wade 
Down the other end, pull up jumper. Won't go, Anderson the rebound, back to Wade. Shot blocked, James gets it. His shot knocked away, but a foul. Second and third effort by the Miami Heat. They'll shoot free throws. Again, they've got to find a way to finish the possessions. Right now, Miami's quicker off the floor and up in the air. They've got to block out and take away the athleticism of Miami. Leonard's second foul. And here we are, Jeff, again. Here, a game that will decide who's the NBA champion. The free throws, so vital. It had a big impact in game six. Wade attacking the rim. Great block by Duncan. Finishes with a little contact to Wade. And then James cleaned up. When Duncan goes to help, somebody or all the Spurs perimeter players. Lane violation. Anderson went in. Duncan appeared to go in first, then looked like he stepped back, and Anderson then went in. So the free throw negated. The players along the lane have to wait until the free throw shooter releases the ball. The shooter has to wait till it hits the rim. But Anderson clearly in before he released it. And Duncan, it, it's legal to go in and then come back out. Why, I don't know. It is. <laughs> Neal. Parker. Parker trying to get himself going. Two on the shot clock. Lost it. And a jump ball. They're going to call a jump ball before the shot clock violation. That's what they'll discuss. Very close. Did they blow the whistle before the 24-second shot clock expired? Or is it a shot clock violation? Nope. They're going to jump it up. Boy, that is so close. Now, <laughs> Tim Duncan trying to get in there to jump it, but won't. Now, if the Spurs win the tip, they get five seconds to shoot. Miami gets it. They obviously get a new 24 second clock. The Heat have done a marvelous job their, defending Tony Parker. Their defense has been great, and Parker just doesn't have that normal bounce to his step. James able to track it down. Ahead to Wade. Wade cross court deflected once again. The great active large hands of Kawhi Leonard. He's got such great defensive instincts. If you're Greg Popovich, who do you play down the stretch? Green, Neal, Parker all struggling. Do you go back to Ginobili and Diaw? Green playing off Wade again, daring him to shoot. James with Leonard on him. Five on the 24. James drives underneath, back up top, Battier off the mark, and Leonard tracks down yet another rebound, his 13th. Parker the drive, wild shot, Duncan right there to clean it up. And I think that was a pass, Mike. I really do. I think he saw Anderson coming and he just threw it up. He is a clever player and setting up Tim Duncan that time. And Duncan now with 19 points. Well, Parker, it's been a struggle. He sees the help coming, and he just lobs it up to the rim to Tim Duncan. The Spurs seem to be right there where you're almost expecting them to get knocked out, but they keep fighting back. Look how exhausted he looks. Let's listen to Greg Popovich. Guys, it's the last game of the year. The last two teams standing. Lay everything out there. And that means with your teammates. They got talent. We got to beat them with all of us. Let's play smart. Let's enjoy. Come on. We said it earlier. This game right there for the taking for both teams. A two-point game, eight and a half remaining. The composure of both coaches in this series has been remarkable. Chalmers to the basket. Heat back up by four. 14 for Chalmers. 
completely too easy. Danny Green way downtown. Short, weighed the rebound. All right, you talked about substitutions. How about Eric Spolstra and Chris Bosch? Bosch hasn't scored a point tonight, and this team right now out there playing Bosch just checked in the last time. You surprised or? No, I, I'm rolling with my best guys. Chalmers way off Leonard the rebound. Bosch came up huge in game six down the end of the fourth quarter and in overtime. Green, dangerous pass, deflected and stolen. And a foul call. As Wade is shaken up on the play. And Miami will take it out of bounds. Wade slow to get up. And the officials may be discussing whether this is a clear path. Foul right here. But Danny Green has to stop putting the ball on the ground right now. It's leading to bad play. Now they're going to get away from Tim Duncan to decide it. That's such a dangerous pass. That is a clear path because LeBron James had already released the pass. The ruling on the floor. Yep, they call it clear path. Now they'll look. I wonder if it has anything to do with, we'll check with Steve Jabby, if it has anything to do with Wade being on the floor and not watching. Wade's down on the ground when it occurs, trying to get up, but falls again. <laughs> Look at him crawling to try and push the ball ahead. And let's check in with Doris and Steve Jabby. So does Dwayne Wade being on the ground have any impact on this call at all? What do you see? Well, Dwayne Wade is above ahead of everybody on the play. What the officials are looking for, what the officials are looking for is possession in the backcourt. At the time of the foul, where was the defender? If he was between the ball and the basket, it's not a clear foul. But as we see here, the ball's loose now. Now the officials are looking at it. They're saying he throws the ball to, to Wade. Wade's ahead of the play. Now the officials are discussing whether it's clear path or not. Let's see what they say. So it matters not that Dwayne Wade really because he's on the ground would have a very hard time making a play. He's still ahead of the play. He's still ahead of the play. Correct. Mike. All right Doris. So no clear path. What Monty McCutcheon is saying. You're not deprived of an opportunity to score because That's the ruling. because he was on the ground and right. wouldn't have been able to right. if he's standing and they think that's going to because we had that earlier in the in the year yes. where the pass was delivered and the foul was taken. That's a big call huge because it would have been free throws and possession. Wade fakes pulls back Duncan guarding him eight to shoot Wade's going to put up a two pointer. Knocks it down. 20 for Wade. Six point heat lead. The biggest part of this game today has been the ability of Wade and James to make jump shots where they had not been comfortable taking them early in this series. Ginobili took his eyes off it, was starting to go before he caught it. Seven minutes remaining. Just an unforced turnover. A six point lead seems like a lot in this game. What we've seen in this series, it means nothing. Wade flips it up. And I believe Bosch called for a moving screen. LeBron James upset. As Bosch picks up his fourth. And you see him riding Ginobili. Eighty-one seventy-five. Ginobili down the lane running shot gets it to go just rolls over the rim and Wade is hobbling. I, I like Ginobili in the pick and roll with James on Parker and I like Kawhi Leonard in the low post as well as Duncan. A big bounce back game for Ginobili he's has 15 now he's guarding Wade. Wade moving better than just seconds ago. Bosch puts it up that won't go Battier. 
but tips it right to Leonard. Leonard. Ginobili pass deflected. No, he just threw it away. Oh, another costly turnover. Rick Popovich can't believe it. Five turnovers already here in the fourth quarter. I thought Wade tipped it. You know, that was close. Shot clock at five. James puts it up, knocks it down. 31 for LeBron James. Timeout, San Antonio. Miami lead with five and a half remaining here in the fourth quarter. They've got it done from the perimeter. They have 20 for 38 between Wade and James. James with the five threes. The San Antonio strategy has been sound throughout. Miami has made them pay for that tonight. And then Shane Battier coming off a brutal slump has been there when they have needed him most. He's one of the great workers I've ever been around. Just a winner throughout his career. Remember, he didn't play in game seven in the conference finals. A did not play coach's decision. He has come through in a huge way here in game seven in the NBA finals. Leonard finding Duncan. Duncan across the lane. Defended well by Bosch, although Duncan thought he was fouled, and a loose ball foul goes against Ginobili. Bosch has fought harder and harder as the series has progressed, holding his ground well. May have gotten away with a foul. Looked like he grabbed the jersey. James. Leonard picks him up, coming up on five minutes remaining. James puts his head down, kicks it out. Bosch for three. Way off the mark. Fight for the rebound. Ginobili comes away. Parker penetrates. Back to Duncan. Duncan won't go, but a foul. And Tim Duncan will go to the line where he's five for five tonight. Huge free throws here. Parker, good push. And a great find of Duncan late. Duncan shot a career high 82% from the line during the regular season. Line drive, no arc whatsoever. And as Duncan trying to get his fifth NBA championship. Perhaps thought he had it in game six, but it slipped through their fingers as they lost in overtime. Two clutch free throws there. San Antonio 19 for 21 from the line. James looking. Duncan picks him up. Six to shoot. James. It's good. 33 for LeBron James. Ginobili for three. That's good. Mono Ginobili, a high arcing shot. 
And San Antonio right back within three. On the steal is Danny Green. Ginobili back to Green. Puts up a three. Just off the mark and James the rebound. That would have tied it. Wade slicing through the defense. And James will reset. Seven to shoot. Trying to get it out of his hands. Wade fakes. Back to James. Three-pointer. In and out. Leonard the rebound. And you rarely see an NBA team double in the middle of the floor. Parker resets. Three and a half remaining. Parker on the drive. The floater. Won't go. Duncan the rebound. Throws it back out. And stolen by Chalmers. Here comes James. Drives. Kicks out Battier for three. Bang! Duncan down low. Puts it up. Banks it in. And a foul. Tim Duncan with a difficult shot. And San Antonio back within four. Even when they get hit with a dagger three, they don't take the timeout. And Duncan hits the tough bank shot. Well, remember San Antonio without their 20-second timeout. They called it earlier in the half. As Bosch picks up his fifth foul, he can't believe it. And I can't either. I thought that was minimal contact for a foul call. And Duncan, another clutch free throw. 24 for Duncan. How about Shane Batty? A 6 of 7 from downtown. And Eric Spolster wants to talk it over. Hearts are racing. Heads are pounding. Palms are sweating. It's game 7 of the NBA Finals. And with 3.06 remaining here in the fourth, it's a three-point game. two to shoot just gets it off the time what a shot from Parker oh what a block from James throws it back at Splitter who is ready to dunk a virtuoso performance from Danny Green now has an NBA finals record for most three-pointers rebound Bosch back out to Allen his three-pointer bang tie game with Green blocked by Bosch game over They'll be a game seven. Which has turned into a thriller. What a roller coaster ride of emotions in these NBA finals. The teams and their fans from sheer ecstasy to getting sick to your stomach. Well, we still have three minutes remaining. Battier, nice feed to Betway. And he puts it in. Gorgeous bounce pass from Battier. A favorite after timeout play of Miami because you don't want to help off James on the curl. Duncan, single coverage, spins against Bosch, forces up the shot. James, the rebound is 11th. The entire arena on its feet in the stands, even in the upper deck. Six to shoot. James, off the mark, green the rebound. Ginobili floats it into Duncan.
Ginobili, Kawhi Leonard for three, puts it in, two point game with two to play. Kawhi Leonard, what a performance from the 21 year old. 19 points and 16 rebounds. Wade, another one, looks absolutely exhausted out there. Chalmers with six on the 24. Chalmers drives and draws the foul, nearly puts it in. But a horrible foul by Danny Green. Why are you going to reach in? Make Chalmers make a tough shot. Chalmers a good free throw shooter. You got Duncan there to protect the rim. Chalmers, 9 for 11 in the finals. Misses that one. First NBA Finals for a second year player, Kawhi Leonard. We are seeing a, a young player with the potential to be a star in this league. Because they had nothing on that possession. Bosch had it and lost it. Off two missed free throws, Bosch nearly grabbed the offensive rebound. Leonard, another three, way off. And it goes out of bounds with 125 remaining. The NBA championship on the line. And not going to LeBron James on this critical possession. Wade pulls up. Off the mark. James skies in for the offensive board. Battier open for three. Too strong. Ginobili trying to go for it. Comes up with the ball. Under a minute remaining. Green nearly lost it. Back to Ginobili, inside Duncan, across the lane. Duncan misses the tip, no good, and bash the rebound. He clinging to a two-point lead. And a point blank miss by Duncan, and then the follow. Timeout, Miami. 39 seconds remaining, and the Heat lead it by two. Duncan with a great opportunity to tie the game. Good search out by Ginobili to find Duncan against the smaller Battier, and then another point-blank miss with a chance to tie the greatest power forward to ever play. Tough luck. The Heat up two. Coming up, Sports Center on ESPN following our game, complete game seven post game coverage on ESPN after the game, 90 to 88 right now, 39 seconds remaining. Miami leading by two. The Spurs a golden opportunity. A bounce here, a bounce there. That was the story in game six, also here in game seven. And you see Tim Duncan, the frustration, knew the opportunity was right there. And the question now is, does Miami try to generate a quick shot to get a two-for-one situation, or do they just want to get the best possible shot in this 14 seconds left 
on the shot clock. The stoic Tim Duncan showing unbelievable emotion here as we wind down game seven. 14 to shoot for Miami. And they're not going two for one, it doesn't look like. James pulls up, puts it in, four point lead. 35 for LeBron James. Timeout San Antonio. It's their go to play. Chalmers screening for James. The 17 footer. Leonard tries to close the gap late. Excellent balance by James and knocks it in to give him a four point lead. A brilliant performance for LeBron James once again in Game 7. This is what he's worked on, his jump shot, to make him the complete offensive player. And when he needed this skill to shine through in a big moment, it has here in Game 7. That improvement to take advantage of the way San Antonio was guarding him, he has responded in a huge way. Back-to-back -back elimination games, he shines once again, but this one far from over. We certainly saw that in game six. Spurs have one timeout remaining. The Heat have a foul to give. And Tony Parker out of the game. Ginobili inside the Duncan. Back to Ginobili. Ginobili out of control, throws it away. And Duncan fouls James. Manu Ginobili left his feet and a critical turnover with 23.5 remaining. Well, just a straight basket cut that the Heat switched. Good play by Bosch and the steal by James on the ill advised pass by Ginobili. And whenever they shoot everybody, when a guy's shooting a free throw, I think it makes people more nervous. I'd rather have everyone screaming than shushing. <laughs> They're just not used to the quiet. Five-point game with 23.5. Remember, game six was a five-point game with just over 21 seconds remaining. A key is San Antonio has just one timeout left. And they're not going to take it, I wouldn't think, right here. I think they would play off the make or the miss. James, seven for seven from the free throw line. Clutch foul shots for the Heat. Six-point game. Ginobili, a long three. Way off the mark. Rebound, way. Foul by Green. They're ready to celebrate here in Miami. And Wade at the line. His first free throws of the night. 
That makes it a three possession game. And this for Miami, the largest lead of the night. Battier tips it out to Chalmers. Wade throws it up to James. The Spurs will not foul. Final seconds. What a finish. It's back-to-back -back titles for the Heat. The 2013 NBA championship resides once again in Miami. What a wonderful display of sportsmanship and class from Greg Popovich and the San Antonio Spurs. LeBron James earns his second ring as the Heat repeat and secure their third championship in franchise history. A heartbreaking ending in what was a marvelous season for the San Antonio Spurs. Two games right there in the final minutes and the final seconds as Tim Duncan comes up just short for his fifth championship. Much more to come here from Miami. A spectacular NBA Finals. Miami Heat are NBA champions. I'm putting all the pressure on my chest, on my shoulders to uh, come through for our team. To the end, man. To the last second. To the last second. To the last man. To the last man. For me, it's all about us. It's more mind over matter. We just came out with a sense of urgency. Every time our back is against the wall, we respond, and that's what we did tonight. To be a part of something like this is something you would never be able to recreate once you're done playing a game. Such a satisfying moment for a Miami Heat team and franchise that has had the pressure of having to win a championship or be looked upon by many as a season of failure. But they win their second consecutive title. And throughout these finals, such respect between these two teams. There's two great champions right there, Tim Duncan and LeBron James. After the game. Right now, let's check with Doris Burke. Dwayne, a worthy champion, refused to go quietly. What did it take to win this title? Uh, everything. It took everything we had as a team. You know, credit to the San Antonio Spurs. They're an unbelievable team, unbelievable franchise. This is the hardest series we ever had to play. Um, but, you know, we're a resilient team, and uh, we did whatever it took. For three years, you have talked about sacrifice in light of your second championship in three years. What does that sacrifice look like now? This is what it's all about. You know, everything that people have to say about my individual self, um, other guys on this team, this is what, this is the reason we came together. You know, we are brotherhood. This is the reason Ray Allen came to Miami to do something special. And two championships in three years together is an unbelievable feat. So we're just thankful. We're blessed. Um, and we just thank God for giving us the ability to do it. After a hard fought game and series, as soon as the buzzer sounded, you found Tim Duncan. Why? I mean, Tim Duncan is one of the, the greatest players of all time. I mean, he just, he had a hell of a series. If I'm able to do what Tim Duncan did at 37 years old, I'm, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm happy. You know, that guy was a warrior, and I just wanted to pay my respect to one of the game's greats. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. All right, Doris, the growth they've shown in their three years together, they had some growing pains for sure. The most scrutinized, perhaps most overanalyzed team in NBA history. Miami wins game seven in the NBA title, the final score 95-88. The trophy presentation from the American Airlines Arena coming up after these messages.